He'll be here, he'll be here. Well, he told me two o'clock. Two o'clock's long gone. But Mr. Carney, it's almost four o'clock. Would you mind drinking your drink? The glasses have to be off the... Well, why don't you just feed me another and don't talk to me, huh? Look, we don't do business after hours. I got an appointment in here with Ernie Wigman. So you said. But that doesn't change the state law. Now, come on, finish your drink and get out. Can I get the place cleaned up, Mr. Rich? Yeah, buddy. You know, I could call Ernie Wigman and tell him his bartender's got a big mouth. If I do, you'll be doing your mixing at the unemployment office tomorrow. Here's a dime. Go make your phone call. You want me to write down the number for you? What's so funny, Mr. Bones? I don't think you heard me laugh. Mr. Conti, it's closing time. Now, let's get out of here, huh? Come on. Look, you've got a lot to learn about bartending, you and that happy Zulu. Look, I think you better apologize to Buddy over there. What are you, out of your mind? This is not a bum you're talking to. I'm Ernie Wigman's lawyer. Then get yourself a big block letter L and sew it on your tuxedo. But if you don't apologize to Buddy over here, I'm going to splatter you all over the... What's the problem? You got a real smart boy tending by here. Too smart, much too smart. I come in here for a meeting and he gives me the left. How about it, Rich? Yeah, that's right, Mr. Wigman. I was a pretty bad boy. I wouldn't serve him after hours. Then I got mad because he said something to Buddy here and he wouldn't apologize. See what I mean? I think we can all survive this, Vito. I sit down over there. Oh, you got a lot to learn about owning a bar. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Standing there right in the middle of the room, big as you please. No, wait, no, wait. Go out in the back, get yourself a cup of coffee, boy. Right? I haven't settled up yet, Mr. Wigman. I don't know when you get back. You too, Buddy. It's two hours late. I took a nap. I overslept. What's the deal? Well, it's not as rich as we thought, but it isn't bad. Seventy-five thousand, twenty-five on signature. The balance over three years at six percent. Seventy-five. You told me a hundred. I know, Eddie, baby, but this is what the gentlemen are offering. You tell the gentleman I'm not taking. Pictures alone are worth 10, 15. I've been in this building for 20 years. What about the goodwill? Ernie, goodwill they're not buying this year. I don't mind discounting, Vito, but I'm not giving it away. Ernie, I'm just the messenger boy delivering a proposition. Now, either you take it or you spit it out. You go back and tell them I'd like another day to think it over. Tell them I'll give them my decision tomorrow. Whatever you say. Call me tomorrow. Why don't you meet me here? Oh, no. I've had it here. That bartender of yours gives me an itch. And your menstrual man is many laughs. Lady, there's a buddy. Let me give you a personal observation. This is a joint. It stinks. It's every dirty little bar in the world. So get rid of it. Thank you, Counselor. I'll give it a thought.
we do tonight? Well, the register reads one and a quarter. One and a quarter? Somebody ought to take Monday nights and tear it out of the book. What do you suppose people do Monday nights? They sure don't do any drinking. Cheers. Cheers, Mr. Wigman. Why don't you have one with me? Yeah, I'd like that. of cruds in the world, not the least of which is my lawyer. Ah, make an allowance, Rich. He went through law school on cheese sandwiches. He's still hungry. You don't take to him, do you? Mr. Wigman, four o'clock in the morning, I don't take to anybody. Let me have another. You too. I don't know, Vito's got the same itch that I've got. Got a case of the middle-aged hives. <laughs> so, you take an inventory on a blue Monday and what looks back at you from the glass. <laughs> an aging Charlie, and very short on breath. And you know, that's a bum time, Rich to be past 50. Wisdom is all you've got. Not enough of that. And the shakes, the blues, <coughs> the chest pains, and the questions. Walk, do not run, buddy, because street's a lousy place to die in. You could do worse. At least you own something. You own a bar. I own a bar. That's right, I own a bar. And I've got an apartment and a hi-fi and a season's box at the Yankee Stadium. And that's the product of close to 60 years. As some product. How old are you, Rich? 37. 37. That's a good age. Young enough to swing and old enough to know, huh? You always tended bar, Rich? Oh, 12 years on and off, Mr. Wigman. Mr. Wigman. Hey, that's who we are. Mr. Wigman. Something wrong? Yeah. Mr. Wigman's wrong. My first name's Ernie. Call me Ernie tonight, will you, Rich? Whatever you want. Let's take off the nameplates. Couple of guys, 4.30 in the morning. We were having a drink. You don't say much, do you, Rich? Why not? Nothing to say. Mm -hmm. I doubt that. You're a good bartender, Rich. You got a head on your shoulders, you know? Carrying on conversation with the customers, remembering what each one wants. Remember to keep an eye on the guy who wants the bottle on the bar. And then, you know, the cash register, the prices. I mean, this takes mental work. <laughs> I think I'll have you stuffed. <laughs> I'll give you to science. You're the first and the last. How long you been with me? A couple of years? Uh, three years, November. Three years? Well, that's a long time. Before that, you... You were drifting, weren't you? I've done just about everything in the books. Honest and dishonest. You know, the only difference between myself and most bums... <laughs> ...is that I never liked it. Hey, you fought some, too, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I had about 18 fights. Nothing much to brag about, though. <laughs> and I spent more time in jails than hotels. And I've drunk more than I've mixed. But I never liked it. 
I always wanted to throw out an anchor someplace. You know, buy a place, put up a sign. Just give me a couple of routes to go a little deeper than a, a train whistle. To own something. That's a big thing with you, huh? To own something? I can't think of anything bigger. Some guys get sick because they can't climb a mountain. Other guys will settle for a set of dishes, you know? All kinds of hungers, huh? <laughs> Funny thing. Uh, work with a guy two years, three years. All he is is a white coat and a couple of buttons. First name, maybe. Well, that's all he is. And you have a couple of drinks with him, and you find out that he's a guy just like you are. What time is it? 25 to 5. The club must have closed an hour ago. June will be right here. <laughs> no, no, that's no chick, Rich. What difference? I don't have to take her home to meet Mother. Neither do I, unfortunately. So where do I plight my troth? At the hat check counter of a broken down nightclub. You're quite right, Rich. All kinds of hunger. Tonight? Stick around with the photographers. I smile at five. You look tired, Ernie. I'm always tired. You want to get used to that. When I was rich as age, I could spend half an afternoon running away from a prohibition agent and hold a dinner party at night. But not anymore. What do you say, buddy? Not too bad. How are you tonight, Mr. Whitten? Well, the staff is assembled. I uh, think I can make my announcement now. I'm selling out, boys. Beto's got a six-man syndicate, owns about 30 places this side of town. They made me an offer. We're not too far apart. Yeah. Long time, huh, buddy? 18 years. What are you planning on doing, Mr. Wigman? Doc says I've had it. No more worries, no more aggravations. Just chop it off and go south. Get yourself some tackle and spend the rest of my life fishing. Either that or... That's a funny thing. I've owned bars since I've been 22 years old. I wouldn't know what it was like to go to bed before 6 in the morning. How about selling me the place, Mr. Wigman? You? Price is 110, they're offering 75, I'll settle for radio. What have you got? A hot tip on a race? A rich lady? I got a yen. Yeah, no. Well, that better be Japanese money. And you better have millions of them. How much time do I have? Tomorrow night. How much do you think you can come up with by tomorrow night? Well, let's see tomorrow night. You?
Mr. Wegman, you're a decent man, and I wish you well. I'm just a nickel and dime saloon keeper, buddy. Oh, I am. But I thank you for the good thought. I really do. Mr. Rich, if you buy the place, I'll take a cut just to help you get started. I'd like to stick around. Hey, that's okay with me. Maybe we can be partners, huh? Let's see, I have about uh, $83 saved. You wouldn't happen to have 48825 on you, would you? If I had it, I'd hand it right over to you. Okay. <laughs> hey, now that we're practically partners, do me a favor. Huh? Don't call me mister. Let's drink to it. tell much until I check the damage. I don't know. I guess it'd be all right. I never could understand doctor talk. The cafeteria's open downstairs now. You want to get some coffee? No, I'll stick around a while. Well, the doctor said that he'll sleep until afternoon. I had no place to go. Well, I'll stay with you a while. Look, you do what you want to do, huh? Oh, it's so heavy with you. Nothing. Forget it. No, I mean it. You keep looking at me and talking to me as if I were responsible. Looking at you? Honey, I've been looking past you and I'm not even talking to you, so just relax, huh? Look, why don't you go take a walk, huh? Go get your coffee. I'd just like to clear the air here. Clear the air? Well, what do you want from me? Listen, honey, I'm not any Wigman's lawyer. I'm not his executor. I'm just a lousy bartender, and all I can give you is a mixed drink in the right time. Now, look, honey, if you're sweating out any Wigman's cash, you just go in there, puncture a hole in the oxygen tent, and ask him yourself. Did anybody ever tell you you have a dirty mouth, Buster? Look, if you're worried about competition, buddy, just forget. I'm not here to contest any wills. I just want to be around to hold his hand when he wakes up and tell him he's been missed, because I like him. Which points up another question. What are you doing here? I saw your look last night when Ernie talked about the bar. Stone-faced nothing. You look like a leopard at feeding time. My son, the bar owner. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now that we understand each other, hmm? I walked into his bar one night, and Ernie Wigman gave me a job. I owe him for three years' work, no questions asked when he tells me about this hat check girl. Now, I figure that this guy's got to get himself hurt. Now, a 58-year-old man, not rich, but comfortable. I mean, don't you figure that a guy like this is ripe for some... For a broad, he's ripe. For somebody with a hook. But he's not ripe for me, Buster. Ernie Wigman has given me plenty, but I never ask for a thing. Look, you want to own a bar. That's very big with you. Your voice shakes when you talk about it. Or you think you're the only guy on earth that ever ached for something. Just ask me, pal. Maybe it's not a bar with booze. Maybe it's just some fresh air. Maybe it's just a short week without being pawed, propositioned, and conned. You need Ernie Whitman for his bar. Well, I need him because he has the key to the cage and I want out. You still want that cup of coffee? Tiny baby, you gave us a scare. Not as bad as what I gave myself. 
Now, don't worry. I told the boys. They give you till Monday. Thank the boys. There's uh, one little fly in the ointment, Benny. Well, I mean, they know you had a heart attack. You're not going to be so particular about getting rid of the place. So they're not going to up the 75000 As a matter of fact... Do me a favor, will you? If I got till Monday, give me till Monday. I'm not up to fancy haggling now. What's the matter with me? I don't think. Here I come bugging you, and I don't realize how bum you must feel. I'll tell you what. I could draw up the papers, and tomorrow, if you're feeling better... Don't push me, Vito. Or I'll leave the bar to charity. They can turn it into a soup kitchen, then you can dig in the ground for your commission. Understand me? I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Annie. Yeah, and a good night to you, too, my sweet. Do me again, will you, Rich? I'm gonna drink that ex-wife of mine out of my head. the lease. Your grandchildren can have it. Fifty years with options. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Two scotches, Richie, on rocks. I want you to meet Mr. Metcalf. He's buying the place. Two scotches, dollar eighty. Change. Get yourself some smelly aftershave. I'm gonna grow a beard. Thanks anyway. You're a feisty boy, huh? How's your Zulu friend? You better be nice to Mr. Metcalf. You might be working for him. I doubt it. This guy could curdle bourbon. <laughs> hey, come on, I'll uh, I'll show you the office. Huh? The office is locked. Uh, give me the key. I'll tell you what, Mr. Conti. You bring back a written okay for Mr. Wigman, and I'll let you have the key. Is he kidding? What is this thing with you, Rich? Are you looking to get your head split open? Now, this thing with me, Mr. Condy, is... This is Mr. Wigman's bar. The stools are Mr. Wigman's, those booths over there are Mr. Wigman's. And the office is Mr. Wigman's. Everything in here belongs to Mr. Wigman. And none of these are effects. This isn't an estate. So if you two guys want to divvy him up, that's your business. But I'm not going around opening doors so that you can do it. Oh, my God. 
have a cigar on you, do you? Would you take a glass of orange juice instead? Would you? I don't smoke cigars. I don't drink orange juice. Funny how much thinking you can do, horizontal. Come up with some nice, earth-shattering conclusions? Maybe. Do I propose to a hat check girl whose mother's probably younger than I am, or, or do I go on playing it by ear? I wish I had that cigar. I always think better with a cigar. Well, how about a nap? You've got a lot of sleep to catch up on. You want this kept on? Yeah, I'm scared of the dark. Well, if you have a bad dream, just call me. I'll bring you a teddy bear. Bring me one that smokes cigar. I'll see what I can do for you, Mr. Wigman. Nice. Is Ernie all right? Yelling for cigar. He's fine. <laughs> he was concerned about you. Uh, I'm at home in jails. You know, one of the customers bailed me out. Nobody pressed charges, so they let me go. I figure I got off cheap. song reminds me of Cherry Point, North Carolina. Yeah, in 1942, I was in the Marines. Wow. <laughs> well, that was one place I really had it made. Hm. I was very successful down there. I was a big success. Handling knives, flamethrowers, VARs. Sort of found a home, huh? Well, there are worse ways to make a buck. Now, you know what I think it is, June? I think it's the system. I've made a dozen phone calls within the past 24 hours, trying to raise enough money to put a down payment on the place. You know what I got? Eleven no's, one maybe. I tell you, it's the system. Telling me? Cheers, loser. Drink hearty.
all those lines could talk, they'd tell a hell of a story, wouldn't they? That's right. And it won't get any better. Maybe I could improve things. You don't happen to have $80,000 on you, do you? Well, not quite. But Ernie is a friend of mine, too. Maybe the deal could be a little bit better if he knew that it was... for both of us. Maybe it would be better. I come with grief, you know that, don't you? I know that. I don't have much. And right now, I'm standing in line waiting for this rinky-dink bar with a couple of booths. I have nice legs. I could wear a nifty costume, serve the drinks, lend you a little class. Where have you been? Standing in line right behind you. Why didn't you ever turn around? I just did. It's rapture. Can't you see the glazed look in my eye? I'll tell your friends they can come in now. Have you been a good, honest boy, or do I have to frisk them for cigars? <laughs> Be my guest. You can come in now. Hi, Ernie. Feeling better? Yeah, I never was sick. What about you? Who sprung you? Ah, oh, some guy named Reynolds. Used to sit at the end of the bar. You met him. Oh, come here. I want to tell you something. You want my bar. <laughs> that makes you a jerk. The neighborhood's run down. Business is 30% less than last year. And now everyone has television sets. But you've got this yen. All right, Rich, you got a deal. First of the month, you own a bar. I'll have Vito draw up the papers. Now, I want to be paid at the rate of 600 a month. Now, I want this 600, rain, shine, or prohibition. Yeah, but uh, what about the down payment? You smuggle me in a couple of good stogies, a book of matches, and that's the down payment. I don't know what to say, Ernie. I don't rate it. Nobody rates anything. Which brings me to you. This is a, a Nazi way to propose marriage, June, but... I've been asked by maybe a dozen guys. All kinds of proposals. This was the best, Ernie. It came from the past. It sounds gentle, June. What's it mean? Tell him. It's just too quick, Ernie. What do you mean, too quick? I, I'm a half a block away from Social Security. <laughs> You're not fresh out of college. We don't have 50 years. What happened, June? Someone to leave you a bundle? Did your ship come in? June. Ernie.
tell him, Rich. You don't have to tell me. The damage was in the chest, not in the brain or the eyeballs. I can think, I can see. All kinds of hunger, huh, Rich? All kinds. You sign a note for a guy's bar, but his girl, his girl you just take. Behind his back you just take. And you, nobody took from you. Nobody knew what you owned. All I want is a wooden plow and, a, and an acre of land, huh? Just give me a chance, Ernie. Please, Ernie. Please, just hand over everything you worked for all your life. Because I'm so full of such hungers. Of the luxuries. The things you love. You can't replace. Here's your take anyway. Here's you don't even have to give, hmm? That's a lie, Ernie. I'm not stupid! I may have had a couple of hopes, but I'm no dummy. I thought maybe... Maybe just once in your life somebody holds the door open for you and, and doesn't pinch you on the way out. Maybe you'd know you're important to him. You are important to me, Ernie. Sure I am. Three nights in August while you're hustling up trade for the rest of the season. Get out of here, the two of you. You make a fine-looking couple. You are the Perfect match of the season, a fink and a bimbo. Get out of here! Get out. Are you all right, Mr. Wickman? Tell me something, will you? Just tell me, why must a guy stay alive past his time? Why? Been sweating you out, Mr. Rich. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was a waste of time. Let me have a scotch. No ice, no lemon peel, and no mister. I hear you talking. I hear you talking. Hey. How is Mr. Wigman, Rich? How is Mr. Wigman? Mr. Wigman's lonely. He's lying in a bed of tears on his stomach. Can't lie on his back because of all the knife wounds. What happened, Rich? I'll make you a promise, buddy. I'll look sad for another couple of more drinks. But no jacks. That's a promise. I'll hold you to it. You, uh, take turns now, huh? Did you know that this place is restricted? You want to know what this place is restricted to? Hmm? Losers and also rats. Uh-huh. Give me a drink, buddy. You know, um, hotshot lawyers with big deals, they go uptown now. Why don't you just go on uptown, huh? For an encore when I'm feeling blue, 
I bust noses and I eliminate teeth. And right now, I'm feeling blue. And you're about a minute and a half away from a dentist. Can you give me one of those, too? I think I need it. I got a call from Ernie Wigman. Wants me to draw up sale papers, huh? Transfer of ownership. He said you knew the times. Oh, I know that, too. Yeah, that's, uh... That's the same song you sold Ernie Wigman out for. Boy, what a con artist you are. What a double-dealing, fast-footed con artist. Wait a minute, wait. He said I could buy the place? Hey, tell me. No, level with me, come on. Come on, level with me, huh? Level with me. How do you con a guy like Ernie Wigman? I mean, I mean there's a guy that can smell a, a snow job clear across town. How the devil did you con him? It was easy. It was very, very easy. All you do is you wait until a guy gets in a hospital, lying flat on his back with tubes in his mouth, needles in his arms, and then when he's breathing his last breath, you just stick it in, and then you twist it, all right? Ernie's dead, buddy. He died 20 minutes ago. Oh, my God. He just accommodated once too often. Wrong people and the wrong reasons. All kinds of conveniences are Richie. They even die for it. <laughs> I'll send you a postcard. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm going away. But you don't have to go anywhere. It's yours. He, he left the bar to you. I know. I know all about it. He wanted you to have it, Rich. Don't boot it. It's ours. It's a beginning. No, it isn't. It's a small bar. There isn't room enough for three. Ernie Wigman was a big man. I don't mean the bar. Us? Yes, us. Wouldn't work. He'd be everywhere, under the bed, in the closet, everywhere. We could go someplace else. I mean, every place is the same. So kiss them off, hop afraid. Nice having this chat, kid. Oh, God, Richard, God. You do a lot of damage in a couple of days. Consider it a gift for me to you that I only took two days out of your life. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I didn't take any more. Looks like a very nice day. Have a very nice day, June.